still got to restore the, the nave of the church and also some of the side chapels. But uh, we, the, the whole point of the fundraising campaign is to be able to get the money together in order to do that. So uh, we're hoping that very soon we'll be able to uh, finish the work in the church because it looks rather unfinished at the moment, I'm sure you agree. And you have about a million of the five million you need? Nearly, yes. yes. And just tell me what's so special about the oratory, because I know that since you came here in 1990, your congregation has grown from 200 to 900. And we try to create a, an atmosphere of home, really, yes. that, that people uh, feel as though they're part of a larger family. And what St Philip and Newman both uh, talked about, you know, holiness and, and uh, teaching individuals to grow in, in holiness and, and in prayer. And uh, that's, you know, it's, it's a place where beauty of holiness is shown. And that's quite unusual in modern life, isn't it? Because we're so focused on rushing around, especially in London, on the hustle and bustle, on material goods. And how do you manage to sustain that, especially in the face of all these students coming to Oxford now who um, all tend to want to go into the city, not to the church as they used to want, once want to do? It's exactly the same as St Philip did in the 16th century. He's, he used to go out to people on the street corners and say, when are we going to begin to do good? And you know, he just approached people and gave them the idea of the supernatural. And, and he didn't tell people that they had to you know, leave behind everything that they did, but rather to become holy in their daily lives. And it's the same today. You can have a job in the city, you can uh, live in the world, but uh, have that supernatural outlook um, by being made holy in your daily life. And what's, how does the oratory help in terms of encouraging people to live that life of holiness? What's special about Newman's teaching that lends itself to that message? I think it's because it deals with the individual, it takes people on, on the individual level and not as a, as a group, that we work with people, as Newman's motto is, heart speaks to heart. Uh, we are able, we have with more priests being here, we're able to work with people on a more of a one-to-one -one basis with personal direction and uh, I think that encourages people because, as Father Daniel said, people are interested in the supernatural. and served the parish faithfully in that time. And there is a large collection of relics and uh, holy items that was assembled here. I think there's one which is of yeah. great interest. This belonged to St Philip Neri and in fact was lost uh, for many years. And there was a priest staying here for a couple of weeks before we arrived in 1990. And he found it locked away in a cupboard. And uh, you can see that's his one signature. of our greatest treasures. Mm -hmm. And just explain who Neri was. He was the founder of the oratory in 16th century Rome, uh, who had a great experience of the Holy Spirit coming into his heart in the form of a ball of fire. And uh, uh, simply, uh, it's known as the third apostle of Rome because he changed Rome, not by great preaching or, or campaign, but simply uh, by changing individuals one by one. Jesus. Being irrelevant. Again, I think it's similar to St. Philip. It's treating people as individuals in a, in a society where we, can, we tend to lump people together far too much, treat people only as a kind of, what would you say? A uh, mass as, of people. Uh, yes, 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 a, a, a statistic. A statistic, yes. yes. Whereas I think St. Philip teaches us the, the importance of the individual. And what was it about um, Neri and the oratory that attracted Newman, do you think? Joyfulness was part of it. It's the patron mm -hmm. saint of joy. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't take himself too seriously. Also, Newman saw in the oratory something similar to what an Oxford college was in his mm -hmm. time, a centre of learning and friendship. And he also thought that, or believed that St Philip was, was a, a kind of link between the ancient church and the church of today because he kept alive in the church of the Renaissance um, the the primitive, the, the early um, joyfulness and evangelical simplicity of, of the gospel. So through where this picture of St Philip is, uh, through this arch uh, will be the entrance to the baptistry where the font will be and that will yeah. move that door to the baptistry and there'll be another entrance to the chapel there. It'll be here. Here the baptistry, and there a chapel for Newman with relic of Newman we hope 
and um, uh, space for about 50 people. So it will be a, a shrine and also a place for, for personal prayer and masses and so on. The uh, baptistry and chapel and then a very small cloister linking it with the building that we're in currently where we've got parish rooms on the ground floor, the new library on the second floor and then behind that uh, accommodation uh, for um, new vocations for the oratory and then this bigger model shows us what we hope the chapel will look like inside. This was a horrible mess of outbuildings, <laughs> an unusable lavatory yes. <laughs> and horrible yes. unused areas. Which uh, there was an air raid shelter an air raid and shelter. all sorts of things to, to bring Christ to people Develop. in Oxford. Yeah. Uh, and there are eight of you now, aren't there? Yes. And, um, but you have, you can see that there is going to be uh, um, more vocations. You can see people in, in the people pipeline. Yes. Yes. I think as well, that I think one has to be ready for people to come. Mm. You can't just be ad hoc about it and build rooms or make places ready for them as they arrive. You've got to and make to it we part of a plan to show that we want people. Yes. a library uh, to house the 10,000 volumes we have now, a uh, library we have in the house scattered all over, and we hope that this will now become uh, a centre not only for study of Newman, where people can, scholars can come along as a resource, but also we hope we might be able to obtain the Chesterton Library as well, which would be a great asset for students from all over the world, especially from the United States. And how has the Chesterton Library come about? How, how, how on earth might that end up here? What well, a wonderful thing that would be. Some of our parishioners who have connections with the G.K. Chesterton Trust have uh, uh, seen that this would be a fitting place as a, as a Catholic centre and a, a place where scholars could come. And, and really that um, you know, Chesterton himself, I think, would uh, you know, see some of the, uh, the aims of the oratory as coinciding with his own. Yes, and it needs a home, doesn't it, before some rich American snaffles it up? That's the idea, yes. yes. <laughs> Any particular relics of his that might, might end up here? Of Chesterton? Yes. I think there is his stick and his, his cloak, I think. There's also various the, other... There's the possibility, there's a sort of um, toy theatre that he has that, um, uh, that may come here, I think. I mean, this is all subject to negotiation still, but, um, you know, obviously, if the money's raised, then we're able to do it, we hope. I'm in the lower six at the moment, yeah, so I'm on slow leave and I'm studying her yeah. to keep me out of the way. Yes. What's your name? Brendan. Brendan Brett. Okay, Brendan. Would you like to explain to me who these wonderful ladies are here, getting the room ready for a parish function tonight? <laughs> right. If you want to hear me talk all the time, so we're going to speak to themselves. What we're doing tonight is we're preparing to celebrate um, the feast of St. Philip Neri, who's um, the, the founder and patron of... Um, the congregation um, who, who are here, the congregation of the oratory, and so we're having a little social after after mass today, which would be nice. Um, and this is Maggie, isn't it? Who Maggie? Yes. Maggie MBE. Oh, oh, yes, so the Maggie community. For yes. For <laughs> <laughs> uh, multiple cirrhosis and cancer, and also we've just come back from Lourdes with our church. We took some people to oh, Lourdes, and uh, I just help here quite a lot also. <laughs> so I'm here, I'm here for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Juliet. Hello, I'm Juliet Ball. Yeah. Um, I'm chair of the parish advisory group, have been for the last few years. Um, we meet to discuss things in the parish and forthcoming events and so on. We had a meeting on Monday night and I help out, not all the time with social functions, just with the, with the larger ones, not with the sort of general Sunday things. <laughs> 